Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Twist Gaming. We are here live at PAX Unplugged 2018 in Philadelphia. I am very much so looking forward to a cheesesteak. But before <laughs> then, I am here with our very good friend Sam from Slugfest Games. Sam, you are no stranger to our show. We've got mm -hmm. to play a lot of the RDI games together. Yes, we have. How many have I won? Uh, sure. you've, you've won at least the one like Red Dragon this. in 7 game, yeah. I like that. At least one. So so now I have to come at you with a sword and, and reclaim victory for, this, for the Look, company. I mean, I didn't know I hurt <laughs> your feelings that badly. <laughs> you know, I challenge your sword, sword fight. Yes. On guard. On guard. On guard. So How appropriate that we happen to be playing on guard. Hey, now. <laughs> So you have something for me today that is yes. not RDI. We got some On Guard, and what is this all about? All right, so the quick history of On Guard is it's, I believe, our third game that we ever made back in 2003. Okay. And it is a fencing game among uh, impeccably dressed Renaissance-era fencers who are trying to, you know, prove that they have the... Uh, Prove that they have what it takes to win a cliffside duel to the death. I mean, we are impeccably dressed, but I didn't yes, know if we, we needed to actually call that out in the game. Well, true, true. <laughs> so, um, in this game, we are going to be defending our poise okay. over a series of exchanges with swords. Okay. The game plays two to six players, um, and uh, we just go ahead and start it up. I like that. So, you need nine cards. Okay. One, two, three. And I'm going to try and show off these on guard five, cards a little six, bit. There, we have a little. Seven, oh, no, that came eight, out real nice. Nine. Now, are the cards here secret information or public? They are secret information. Okay. Uh, we draw from a common deck, which okay. will live right here. I think you can. Can you reach that guy? Absolutely. Excellent. All can right. We put one of these cards in and yes. you go over the anatomy of the card. Oh yeah, sure. Sure. All right. So this is the other side of Ooh, the Ooh, we go card. straight to a fancy move. Hey now. So um, a card is very straightforward in this game. It'll have a title. It'll have a card type. There are various card types, and we'll dive into that as we play. That one happens to be a fancy move. And then it'll have an ability that it will resolve. So fancy moves are our special cards that will do a whole bunch of unique things. Okay. Uh, the other important cards to know off the bat are attacks, which are how you cause damage to other players, okay. and responses, which are how you stop from yourself from being stabbed with a sword. Okay. So uh, we're going to go ahead and dive in. Yeah. Uh, would you like to go ahead and start us? No, nah, I should start us off because I <laughs> theoretically know what I'm doing. <laughs> So, like most uh, Red Dragon, in, uh, sorry, for like most Slugfest games, sorry. games, uh, you start the round with a mulligan. So you can, uh, at the start of your turn, discard any cards you don't like and draw up to a hand of nine. Okay. But I will refrain from doing so and dive right into the stabbing. So I will start off by playing an attack card, which is called a thrust. Okay. It will do two damage to you if it lands without you responding to it. Okay. And you will look at your hand and see if you have any cards that are responses or fancy moves. And specifically a response that will say block an attack or reduce the damage of it by providing it with some amount of shields. Or uh, a fancy move which will do something usually very good for you. So I have a partial parry here. That's a perfect card for a thrust. Okay, so this card cannot be affected by press cards. Exactly. So that means um, I'm going to now have a turn in the exchange. Okay. And I can either play a press card to remove your response, Ooh. unless it's that one. Okay. Or I can play a fancy move. Or I could potentially play an additional attack. So let's get those guys back out here. Now what is the two shield in the bottom left corner here? That means you're going to reduce the damage of my attack by two. And nice. those of you watching at home will notice that my thrust does two damage. So it's effectively negated. So I will look at my hand. And I will play the fancy move, Taste My Blade. Play an attack. Yes. And I will play a second thrust. Ooh. You know. Ha ha! So, uh, what would you like to follow that up with? So you're again looking for a response card, like a parry repost, right? Or another partial parry, or a hard parry, well, or gonna, your own fancy move. We're gonna throw out that hard parry there. A hard parry. She really doesn't want me to remove any of her defensive cards. No. So hard parry has a cost up at the very top of the card. Because you are exerting yourself, you lose a point of poise to play the card. Okay, and so here is the poise card here. Yeah, One we all start with 10 poise. You may notice that there is no poise written at the bottom. Once you're at no poise, you aren't eliminated from the game. You're just desperately fighting for your life. And we'll get to that when one of us drops to there. Okay, so, so there's my card parry. So these all line up like this. This is called the field. Okay. It's where you keep all of your cards. And she's blocked both of my attacks. And I look at my hand to see if I have anything fancy. 
that I can do about it, and I unfortunately do not. Hey, no. So all of these attacks are removed. Okay. And I successfully dealt one damage because I forced you to defend yourself. Fair enough. Fair enough. And um, we move on to your turn. Now, I could play any poise restoration cards or items, but I don't. I choose not to because I may not have them in my hand. May I play an item or a... Uh, well, first you get to draw some attack. cards. Oh, oh so, I like this. Uh, discard anything you don't like. Okay. If you have a lot of items, you might want to just keep one of them. Okay. Uh, so you can go ahead and discard those cards because you only have one open hand because it's assumed you brought a sword to the sword fight and that's occupying your main hand. Fair enough. So I'm going to discard this one card All right. here. And now you may draw up to a hand of nine. So that's okay. three cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, sir. So it's three more cards. So the first thing you do is equip an item or play a poise restoration card. Okay, so I... And you could do any number of those any number of times. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and equip that item there. That's the main gouche. It increases your damage by one and provides one passive damage reduction. Awesome. So you're just better than me in every way. <laughs> One way to put it. Yes. <laughs> I will overcome these these trials and tribulations, however. All right. uh, do you wish to play an attack? Yes. Now, the game plays two to six players. If there were more players, you when you play an attack the first time on your turn, you would pick you would single out an opponent to have a duel with. Oh. Okay. Uh, there are Four attacks in the game. Disarm yes. lets you typically get rid of other players' equipment. Uh, slash is the most uh, is the safest attack because it prevents your opponent from counterattacking. Usually, lunge is the most damaging attack and it lets you press uh, continue pressing attacks if your opponent isn't aggressively fighting back. And then thrust is just the simple boring attack. All right, so I'm going to do a slash. Ooh, oh. So oh. the important thing about Slash is that I can't parry repost against it, which Kay. and parry repost is the most common block. Okay. So you have a Slash coming my way. There I'm looking you go, at my good hand. Sir. And I will defeat your Slash with my superior technique. Wow. Which allows me to just remove an attack from the field. Okay. So that attack is removed. The field is empty. Yes. And it is your turn, which okay. means you can start a new string of attacks against me. All right. So you can play any attack card. We're going to thrust. All right, that's fair. So the thrust comes down. I will parry. And parry blocks an attack, and if I choose to spend one poise, I can attack back, Ooh, okay. which I will. So I go from 10 to 9. Yeah. And I will play my own slash. And if I had any enhancements, I might enhance this attack because counterattacks are typically difficult to deal with. All right. So I don't have any responses that I can play to that. Oh, do you have any presses? I do. You could remove my parry repost. I think that sounds like a great idea. So her coupe removes my parry repost. They both are removed from the field. And now we have attacks that are passing in the night. Look at that. And are going to be hitting both of us. OK. Um, I'm going to choose not to play any cards because I think it'll just get worse if I do. So as soon as one of us decides to end the exchange, the exchange resolves. Your okay. thrust hits me for two. Yeah. So nine minus two is usually seven. Oh, but you have a main gouge, yes. so I take an additional one. Okay. And my slash hits you for two, but, but you have a main gouge, so you take one. Okay, so that'll take me down to eight. And there you go. All right. So now you look at your hand. Do you have any restore cards you would like to play? Uh, no, I do not. You do not. Would you like to equip any new items? Uh, no, I would not. All right. Well, then it goes to my turn, yes. and I look at my hand. I like my hand. Uh, one, two, three. And you're going to draw back up to four. nine? Four. Yep. All right. Five, six, seven. Oh, that's a very aggressive hand. Oh, no. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, oh, seven, no. eight, nine. Now, on the plus side, an aggressive. if I have a very aggressive hand as yeah. the defender, if you think I do, you could just let the first attack hit you, and I can't follow it up with anything else. Okay. So the defender has that advantage where they have the first opportunity to go, okay, we're done. I, I can't afford to play any more cards. Okay. Um, but looking at my hand, I'm like, ooh, I can afford to play many cards. So we're going to start off with, with a very simple disarm. And that's going to get rid of my item uh, now. Well, it will if it's still on the field at the end. So disarm is an attack that does very minimal damage, but is guaranteed to remove an item from play. Oh, man. Um, unless she plays typically a fancy move to remove that item. 
or to remove the attack. So a web of steel, a disengage, or a superior technique would be good right now, if you want to keep the main gauche. Um, alternatively, you could just parry repost and stab me back. I think that that's, that's going to have to happen. Oh, parry repost. Would you like to stab me back? Um, okay, but here's... Uh, so this particular one is when I play this card, I may pay one of my... I remember what it's called already. Uh, poise. Poise. Uh, if you play, if you pay, or if you are at no poise, you may play an attack. No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. That that tells me that you might not have attacks in your hand. Oh, well, oh, in that oh, case. I mean, I mean, you know, or or maybe you do. Um, it does cost you a health to do it. Um. Yeah, game on. Okay. All right. So from eight I to like seven. It. Uh oh. And of course, it. she attacks with a lunge. Now, the lunge will drop you from 7 to 6, but throws a 3 damage attack at me. Yeah. That's not good. Or would you like to enhance your attack with anything? Uh. May or may not have an enhance. A Furious Assault would be good. Um, or just, you know, a, a, a strong attack. A powerful I could, strike. I can add another attack to it? Uh, just no. an enhance card. An enhance. No, I don't have any. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, that didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I'm, I'm just going to coupe your parry repost. No. So that at least I can deal something to you. And now it's back to you. You could play another parry repost to block my disarm, or you can play a fancy move. But I can't coupe your disarm. You cannot coupe my disarm. Yeah. And coupe if the disarm and goes through, I'm going to lose my main gauche. Yeah. Well, you're losing the main gauche either way. It's just whether or not you take the damage. Uh, the disarm is so powerful yeah. that it will always remove the item oh. as long as it stays in play. Oh, well, in that case, I can add to an additional attack. Um, unfortunately, no. we are both attacking so already, this is the so I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're good. So your lunge, oh, yes. sorry, my disarm, before damage happens, will remove your weapon. There it goes. So the lunge does not hit me for four. I will take three, six down to three. Okay. And you will take one. So six down to five. All right. Uh -huh. And now I will reveal that I, of course, am not left-handed. And I will gain three poise. One, two, three. There you go. My turn, I drop to nine? Yes, so you do. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Oof. Now in a two-player game, of course, uh, Exchanges will go longer. We will feel more empowered to play more cards fighting one another. Right, right. But if we were at six players, we might be like, uh, I'll play one card and, and see if it happens to hit because there's going to be multiple churns before I get to refill my hand. How many players does this game play up to? Uh, two to six. I think it's best at three to four. Okay. So beginning of my turn, I'm going to equip an item. Uh, you may. Okay, this is my second sword. Oh, well, I mean, if you're just going to be aggressive like that. <laughs> Go right ahead. Uh, and then we're going to start off with my turn. Yeah, all of your attacks get plus two damage. Yeah. All right, so we're going to lunge. Oh, we're just going to go straight for the throat. <laughs> Welcome to Twist Gaming. Are you enhancing it? No. No, so it'll be three plus two. It does cost you a poise to play the lunge. All right, so it gives me to four. And I think to myself, am I going to make this any better? I will not. So I'm just going to take the hit. All right. And lose five poise, so six down to one. All right. And the lunge goes away. Your sword stays. That's good. And now that I'm at one poise, I will explain the poise mechanic. All right. So as long as you have poise, whenever you play a card that costs poise, you must spend it. So it's like a tax. Okay. Because, you know, when you lunge, that extra reaching untucks your shirt or, like, sweats your brow and that sort of thing. As soon as I'm at no poise, I don't care about how nicely put together I am anymore because I am now fighting for my life. Right, right. So any card I play, I will play for free. Okay. But... Once I'm at no poise, any attack that successfully tags me, no matter its size, yeah. will eliminate me from the game. Okay. Right now I'm at one poise, which means if I hit, get hit with an attack that, say, does six damage, I will only drop to no poise. Okay. So, so you the advantage to, run. I can take a lot of damage in my next attack. Okay. So your second sword is kind of mitigated. It right. got me to the point. Now it's not super useful. Right, right. So you might want to just discard it. You should, you should just, no, no, you shouldn't. You should totally keep that sword. Um, I'm going to look at my hand and think to myself. What a wonderful world. What a wonderful, what a wonderful ouch. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. You know what? I think I think I will take advantage of this no poise. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Ooh. Ooh, that's that's an angry hand. Here we go again. It's a thrust. A powerful thrust. So this what? will deal three damage to you. This, I believe, is the first enhancement card we've played. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. Okay. So enhancements are the only time you get to play additional cards outside of a fancy move. Um, the only time you can play an enhancement is along with an attack. So I'm declaring that my first attack is going to be powerful. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and respond to that. Uh, parry repose. There you go. Um, so if I... But I think I'm just going to block. I don't You're just going to block? Yeah. You're not going to follow that up with anything? All right. I don't know. Are you baiting me into I, maybe. it? Maybe. <laughs> maybe I'm baiting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to follow up by using Lunge's special ability. So Lunge, um, right now on the field, she has no attack coming towards me. Right. So I can play a Lunge from my hand as though I were starting the exchange. Right, okay. So that cost me a poise. I dropped to no poise. So from this point on, through the rest of this exchange, I pay no costs. Okay. So I'm That's coming terrible. for you hard. Well, then I've got I think, this lunge. What am I at now if I just take this hit? Uh, you will drop to one poise. I think it's what's going to happen. All right. Pow. So that goes straight through. You're at one poise. I'm at one poise. You're at no poise. And I will reveal that I am wiping my brow oh, man. to give myself one poise. I'm a little disappointed you weren't using your sword as a mirror in that. I know. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Woo. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm living on the razor's nine. edge here. Nine. Okay. Uh, how many items cloaked? One. You can only have one equipped item. Uh, very frequently, someone will attack with a second sword and then, after the exchange, discard it to equip a buckler or a cloak. Unless you're worried about me counterattacking, then you might want that defensive item. So I am going to tip my hand just so that we can talk about this. I do have oh. the cloak item. Ooh, that I the just cloak. Pulled. So the cloak is a very good item because it lets you just remove one attack from play. Okay. Um, it also provides you with one point of, of armor. Uh, but to remove that attack, you must also lose the cloak. So the question is up to you whether or not you think I, you need that extra two damage to do exactly one point of damage. You probably don't need the extra damage, but... What if you keep on blocking stuff, though? If I keep on blocking stuff, then it doesn't matter how much damage you're doing. But I do only have five cards in my hand. Okay. And I might just let your first attack hit me. And then, and then we're done. It's 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 tough. This as soon as players get to that like low amount of poise, is when things get scary. So you're just gonna lunge. I'm oh, just gonna lunge. ooh, I'm just, dangerous. I'm just gonna lunge. I so think. that's gonna drop you to no poise at the start of the exchange. Yeah. So you better hope I don't have a counterattack. But man, you're really tempting me to counterattack. <laughs> but if I counterattack and then you counterattack, I might lose. <laughs> The poison the in mind, front of me. The mind games. Um, oh. Well, I mean, I mean, oh, I, I wish I could. But I will just take the hit. Yeah? And drop to no poise. Uh. I, can't, I can't afford. I can't afford what else might be in your hand. <laughs> that was love. Which, which, with all that disappointment, all the disappointing sounds, was probably taste my <laughs> blade, followed up with parry reposts and that sort of thing. You know, I was trying... I was um, trying to get a couple of things marked together yeah. there. All also, right, this so is nice. oh, you're still alive. Yeah. So uh, oh, do we need to wrap up? No. Oh, excellent. So would you like to play any restoration cards? Any new? Oh, I don't have any. Oh, okay. Would you like to equip a new item? Now would be a good time to equip that cloak um, that I pretended I didn't know was in your hand. And then do I have? I, but then I have to discard my second yes. sword, right? All right, so we're gonna we're gonna have the second sword. And we're gonna discard right. that. I don't have any restoration, so I can't get out of no poise. All right, so All it's right. up to me to seal the deal. Ooh, this is rough. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I too shall have a cloak. <laughs> We are very fancy. We, we are. We, we brought our cloaks to the sword fight. I will thrust. Just a just a simple thrust to try and take you out of the game. Uh, you do have the cloak. Um, so I can remove the attacker. I could respond, right? Yes. 
If you can respond with a parry repost, that would be best. Oh, that is that is also good. Because I can't get rid of that. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, in that case, yeah. I will lunge, dropping. Oh, I'm already at no poise, so I can just go ahead and play the lunge. Can you block the lunge? If I can't block the lunge, it hits and I'm out. Yes. If I use my cloak to get rid of the lunge. And then it comes back to me, good. and if I have another lunge. Which you probably have 800 of. We'll see. But I feel like I need to go, oh, so, but that's not a response card. Is that a, no, it's not. No, it is not. So I, I have right. to go down fighting. Yep, that clears that, and I look at my hand, and I'm incredibly sad I do not have another lunge. <laughs> So this I attack is blocked. I was expecting you to have another lunge. I know. Oh, man. And my only poise restoration card is a moment's pause, which gives us both a poise. Oh, well, this is good. <laughs> Each surviving player gets plus one. Excellent. All right. So and both uh, and it's up to you. But I got rid of your cloak. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's why you wanted me to get rid of the sword. Exactly. Seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Although, if you still had that sword, the cloak wouldn't have been there to save you. That is a health card. Oh. <laughs> okay. There, there's also a, pit, a pistol floating around somewhere in this deck. Which really? would Which would potentially cause horrible, horrible harm. No, I think that would be so great. All right, so I don't have any items that I want to equip. If I do something like a lunge, I would go down to no poise. Yeah, that, that would be dangerous. That would be dangerous. Um, so I think that we're going to go ahead and get rid of that cloak of yours. Oh, well, well, you just don't want me to have my cloak, eh? No. <laughs> I can't have my cloak, you can't have well, your cloak, Well, then I will Sam. do the smart thing and use my cloak to remove <laughs> your attack. We're back to you. Empty field, so you can play any attack. It doesn't have to be a thrust. Oh, uh, sorry, it doesn't have to be a lunge. Okay. So let's start with just the thrust. Uh, a thrust. All right. All right. And I think really hard about whether or not I want to drop to no poise. I do. So we're going to... Parry repost. Okay. I will drop to no poise to play an attack against you. Okay. And that will be my own thrust. A superior technique? Oh, no. <laughs> so that will remove the thrust. Yes. And it also removes the response attached to the thrust. So your thrust is coming back through. This and I will respond with a hard parry. Which okay. cost me a poise, which I'm at no poise, so I, I'm good. You're, you're good with that. And a hard parry cannot be coupéed. That's fine. But I'm sure but you can strong, strong arm, arm it. Me out of it. Yeah, yeah, that will work. <laughs> uh oh. You dropped to no poise to the strong arm. Okay. And I'm out of responses. So I take the hit and am eliminated. <laughs> you fought well, good sir. <laughs> no. I bloody your blouse. It's a good thing I'm already at no poise exactly. because all the extra blood would have definitely dropped me down to that. Oh, yes. And oh, that's, that's the game. Cute. It so, is. Yep. I mean, I know this was a game that you guys had released um, a couple of years ago, and you're bringing it back out now? Yes. So who designed the game? Uh, the game was originally designed by the, uh, the people who founded uh, Slugfest Games. Okay. So I believe that's uh, Colleen Scald, uh, Jeffrey Batone, not to be confused with Jeff Jeffrey Mon uh, Monroe. Okay. Uh, Morrow, sorry. Um, and Cliff Bohm. Okay. Uh, so they, they built the game. Uh, first they came up with Kung Fu Fighting, which was, I believe, our very first game. Then, on, uh, then Fishing for Terrorists came out after that. And then On Guard was the evolution of Kung Fu Fighting. Okay, so, so talk to me, because I haven't played Kung Fu Fighting before, and I'm sure you guys out in the audience, some of you may, some of you may have not. Yes. What, uh, what is Kung Fu Fighting? What makes On Guard different? And what makes, is there any changes to the new release of On Guard? Uh, so Kung Fu Fighting was our cinematic um, uh, Kung Fu fighting game, basically. So it, it simulates all of the martial arts shenanigans of old school wire-fu Hong Kong cinema. 
So Fire, players, cinema. I love yeah, that. exactly. So players would throw uh, magnificent spinning, running up the wall punches okay. into players who would block the punch. So you're you're playing, you're throwing out these ridiculous attacks that have like uh, four or five cards associated with them, right. hoping to rock paper scissors your way through your opponent's blocks. Because a punch block will block a punch of any size. Okay but can't do anything about a kick or a throw. Okay, all right. Um, and then you introduce additional wrinkles like uh, character archetypes, so you could be the, the silent princess or the drunken uh, master or the imperial uh, swordsman okay. and that sort of thing, as well as items. And all of these characters, it's a very enhancement-focused game okay. where you throw all you you have to determine how much you throw go all in on one attack right, right, right. in the hopes that it slips through they don't through. have that particular block exactly. to, to defeat your your attack that you're putting so much time and effort into developing exactly okay uh, meanwhile on guard is more about um, having a bit more focus on the interplay between cards so we are all filled to the brim with cards that will counter or Reattack or or move around that sort of way. So nothing fully blocks anything, and no no single attack is very big. Right. Typically in an exchange, it's the second or third attack that gets played that is actually going to hit somebody, yeah, yeah, yeah. or that second or third attack exhausts resources so that I can then make the first attack go through. Yeah, that was so that's the like you know the swords flying through the air while we are are arrow flinting our way up the staircase until one of us finally gets in. That exactly. was one of the things I noticed playing the game was like your your hand is set up a certain way when you draw those nine cards and it yes. really changes what you're going to do with that move. If I've got a very aggressive hand, whether I have a lot of blocks, whether I have a lot of items. Exactly. And I kind of really like the whole the poise mechanic because it's not mechanism because no you're no not single out. no single exchange can eliminate you. Right. And as soon as you're at that last you know, hit point, basically, right, right. you are welcome to play any cards you want. in an F and, and when you have that ability, that forces other players to have to spend a resource to defend against it. Right, right, right. Or to try and penetrate that defense. So have there been any changes in the development of the game from the original release to the re-release? Uh, yeah, so we're, we're uh, me and Jeff and our playtesters are playing the game, and we're, we're tweaking some things here and there. Uh, a lot of things, uh, the game used to have only a seven-card hand, okay. which meant that people would run out of cards a lot sooner, which means exchanges would almost always be very short, okay. which is less fun. Yeah. So we went up to a nine-card hand. Uh, we, tw we added iconography where, in s where we previously had text, so damage is represented by an explosion rather than uh, target player loses three poise. So you don't need a sentence for that. To explain that right. Um, and uh, we, we've rebalanced a couple of things. Uh, there's one card, the pistol. Let me go grab that. Uh, I was waiting for that to come out. That I, I wanted know. for my dramatic ending. <laughs> I wanted to drop my second sword and come back out with the pistol. It was hidden underneath of my cloak. Exactly. It was probably on the bottom of the deck. <laughs> there we go, the pistol. Uh, the pistol, which is uh, used to do uh, very, it used to do six damage and be unstoppable. Oh wow! Uh, we tuned it down a little bit, so it does only four damage now. It's still mostly unstoppable, uh, but it also is an item now. So if you had your second sword, yeah, and the pistol is in your hand, if you want to shoot me with your pistol, you have to throw away your second sword. So there's a there's more opportunity cost there. Thank you. And the pistol's basically there to like break a stalemate. So if we're just staring at each other with a f handful of parries, <laughs> right? One of us will eventually get the pistol and shoot the other one. Done. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fun standoff. Exactly. And you know, there's rules for if you don't want to play with the pistol, you don't have to and that sort of thing. Um, and the other major change was parry repost. So the car, the original game had both parry, okay. which would only block, and parry repost, which would block, and situationally you could play an attack to counterattack. Okay. And we were like, well, parry repost, because it's optional, is just better than parry. It's also more fun to counterattack. Right, exactly. So all of the parries became parry repost. So, so you just counterattacks are more frequent, which also encourages exchanges to go longer. Yeah. Um, the ability to play any attack on an empty field if someone plays uh, the fancy move disengage, which yeah. cleared all of the field, 
I was able to follow up by just, well, I'll just attack you again. That came so through with the lunge attack, That came right? through with another lunge, exactly. So there's, there's more opportunities for both sides, both on offense and defense, to continue an exchange that in the original game would have just ended. Okay. Um, which makes the counterplay far more interesting. And with a, with a game like this, I know you were saying it plays really well with three to four, but even playing as a two-player game, yes. that interaction and that engagement is a lot of fun. It was fun to kind of go two, three attacks deep to exactly. see, you know, maybe what do you have in your hand and watching your resources kind of go down, it takes, well, what does he really have in his hand? And if yes. I put this down, is he going to come back at me with a lunge? Is, is what he's saying actually true or is that a bluff? <laughs> is he fainting? <laughs> This is very cool. When does un you. you were talking about on guard still being in play testing, or are we? Uh, so so we are. I mean, so me and Jeff just have some ideas for like some light tweaks here and there. Uh, the game is is basically ready to go. I mean, obviously, I have a finished cot version of it here. Right. Um, we are manufacturing it through drive through cards, which is a print on demand service in the United States. Okay. Uh, what you're seeing at the table with the jewel case and all that stuff. Um, minus the goal, uh, the beads, so you'll need to provide your own health markers, okay. um, is what you're getting for the $20 pledge level that's on the Kickstarter right now. Oh, that's so, that's um, a perfect price point for this game. Oh, yeah. And, and, it's, and it's just a fast, violent game. Easy to pick up. Uh, if, if our Kickstarter can get to, can raise $23,000, uh, we're going to upgrade everyone's pledge level away from the print-on-demand version okay. to a boxed version of the game with a print out, printed out rules. So right now you would just get a PDF of the rules. Okay. Uh, but with a printed out rules set with your beads, the player mats will be upgraded so they'll be bigger. Okay. Um, and have a spot for your item so that you intuitively know that you can only have exactly one item equipped and all of that sort of information. So uh, we're, we're at, I believe, we're a third of the way there okay. to the, to the uh, stretch goal, and we have uh, until December 10th to get there. And if we don't, then we just ship this game as soon as, uh, as, soon as we get the money from Kickstarter and everyone will have it by January. Oh, which wonderful. which is a way faster than April, which is what it would take for the manufacturing. The, the higher level kind yes. of quality for the game. So, you know, like a lot of Kickstarters have like a bunch of micro upgrades where we'll right. improve the box, we'll improve the card quality, piece that by sort piece of thing. By piece. And we're like, well, that doesn't really make sense for us. So we just have one. Option A. We have this. And if we get to this one big stretch goal, our unbelievable stretch goal, because we can't use the other word, <laughs> um, then all of those card upgrades, all of those uh, box upgrades, rules set, uh, you know, glossy rules, et cetera, just happen all at once. Okay. Well, that's phenomenal. So you guys are have this game out for Kickstarter right now. You said yep. that the $20 level was the basic pledge level. What other pledge levels do you um, guys have? There's no them? need for any other pledge levels. So You guys I mean, have kept this really simple. This oh, time. yeah. That's we're, really great. We're, we're trying some... Uh, we've been doing Kickstarters. This is our 11th campaign. Yeah. And we like to try new things. Yeah. And there's been... We, we get a few dozen people every month asking us to reprint on guard. Um, is that where the motivation came from yes. to come and reevaluate this project? Exactly. Okay. So, a couple of years ago, it was one or two people every few months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Recent, more recently in the last year, it's been a few dozen uh, every month, and we're like, okay, so we can we can put the put it together now. The big problem was the original art assets ceased to exist. Oh. So the reason why we couldn't just drop a reprint was because we didn't have the stuff for it anymore and okay. we wanted to update the game and it takes time to like go through and very carefully scrub text boxes while preserving the art assets because all we have are the flattened files now Ooh, okay. um, so the art on this card then this is not the this original is the original reprint? art okay um, but we had to go through and like uh, clear out the text boxes and the tops of the cards and that sort of thing so that we could do things like add icons um, and, and clean up the text. Because the game used to be a lot wordier than it is now. Right. Um, That's a lot of the behind the scenes things yeah. that, you know, it's kind of neat we get to learn about when we talk to you guys on stream. Oh, no, it's great. Uh, we just, uh, the last update 
talked about what's going on behind the new design philosophy between behind things like you know why we move to a nine card hand. Typically, you don't want to because people can keep track of seven things. Okay. Um, as a rule of thumb in the industry, that's and that's why many many games have a seven card hand. Huh. Um, that's why poker, you know, like you typically don't play a game of poker with more than seven cards, right. because right. that's how many things you can recall easily. But the opportunity, opportunities presented by going to nine cards were so good that we just had to outweigh that. Um, and after you've played the game once, you can kind of just work off the titles and you know what's going on. Right, right, right. Um, so it's just like little fun information like that we're just throwing out there because there's no reason not to talk about it. Yeah, no, this is the really cool behind the scenes stuff. Well, Sam, thank you so much for coming on and showing us on guard. Was there anything else in this game that you wanted to make sure that we showed off that maybe we didn't get a chance to look at during the playthrough? I mean, I know we touched on the pistol. Yeah. We've gone over a Let's couple see. of the items during the gameplay. Um, so the the fancier uh, so all of the all of the we made all of the good cards fancy cards. So they're specifically called fancy moves, and they help you the most in doing all sorts of weird stuff. So every time you wanted to play an attack but weren't allowed to, you get to when you play. As soon as I find <laughs> it, woo! There we go. As soon as you play that card, you get to cheat and attack into play. Very cool. Oh yeah, yeah, um, I saw that. Normally, you can play only one card a turn, but fancy Wait, moves will break that rule all the time. Awesome. And then there's some other ones. Defensive stance is the best defensive card for when an exchange goes a long time. So you drop that card at the end, and it just reduces the damage of all of the attacks in the game. Applies to each attack in against the, you in the field. Exchange. That's really cool. Awesome. So, Sam, what else does, if anything, does Slugfest have coming down the pipeline that you want to make sure that our viewers and your audience know? Um, well, depending on how well the On Guard Kickstarter does, uh, we're going to be doing a Kung Fu fighting one. Uh, probably April, May-ish, um, I think, is our timeline for that. Um, so I can freely talk about that. Uh, we have a new character coming to the organized, uh, not organized play, our Slug Crew program, which is our volunteer program for running Red Dragon Inn events at your friendly local game store. Uh, the new character, which is the top reward for that program, is coming out soon. Uh, we've been cool. working on her through playtesting. And we've been working on uh, uh, another character through playtesting, which is all open to the public. So if you are interested in helping us playtest games and you have Tabletop Simulator on Steam and you have Discord and a mic, you can show up and we will throw you in a game of Red Dragon Inn and, and play some games. Jeff and I are also working on some passion projects on the side that I can't get into details about, but are really exciting. <laughs> okay. And I wish I could talk about, but I can't. When, when might we hear more about those passion projects? Uh, Definitely by August, probably as early as um, the Gamma Trade Show, which okay. I believe is in May, maybe. Yeah, um, it'll it'll be like spring, spring or summer in 2019. That's super exciting. All right. Well, Sam, thank you so much for coming on today. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. We appreciate it. It's always fun. Folks, we're going to go into a uh, soft sign off while we set up for the next game. Thank you so much for joining us today, again, live here at PAX Unplugged 2018. We'll be right back. All right.